football ignites my soul. It's what makes me go. This is what I do. I'm not here to play. I'm here to build a program. What's happening, y'all, and welcome into the house here on HouseOfSparky.com. I'm Blaine McCormick. He's Scotty Gange and the Sun Devils. Quite an impressive outing over the UTSA Roadrunners and quite an impressive outing from us right now. Changed up our studio, changed up our wardrobe, but quite a few cool plays from Saturday's contest. Yeah, we were at Sun Devil Stadium last week. We're in the downtown Phoenix studio today, but we're sending it right back there for these highlights. It's Herm, Era, and the Desert, and finally time to play some football. UTSA coming in, take on Nikhil Harry and the Arizona State Sun Devils. First drive of the game. Let's start fast. Tell Nikhil, makes a man miss, goes up the middle to the house. Sun Devil Stadium absolutely digging it. Listen to that crowd. 7-0, Sun Devils early. Ensuing possession, Glendon fires a quick slant, but no, a Shannon Foreman INT. Could it be? It is a big man pick six. 14-0, Sun Devils just two minutes into the game. Sparky is feeling strong. Second quarter now, it's Darius Slade coming in from the left side. Gets the strip, the sack, even picks up the ball and gets a few more yards for the Sun Devils. And this time, it's now time for Manny Wilkins. Wilkins, a lob across to the right side, right into the bread basket of Frank Darby to the two yard line. Eno Benjamin was a train. 131 yards on the ground, ran it in for a score and caught a touchdown. Here's that touchdown, two yards on the ground for Eno Benjamin, his first of the season, and all is good in the inferno. With under a minute to go in the half, it was Manny's time to grab a highlight. Making his way out to the right side, looking for a man, looking for a man, finds Terrell Chapman, the back of the end zone, 28-0, Sun Devils at the half, and it is a party in Tempe in the Herm Edwards era, 28-0 early for Arizona State, feeling good. You cannot have an ASU win until we see a Manny Hurl. There it is right there. The first of the season, definitely not the last. And the defense picked up right where they left off in the second half. This one coming in from Kalen Kirsch Thomas, one of nine sacks of the night for the Sun Devils. Nikhil Harry, perhaps the player of the game, 140 yards, six catches, two touchdowns, and let's watch the play of the game right here. Wilkins over to Harry, makes a man miss, spins, sidesteps, steps back, going across the field to the other side, makes one more man, breaks that tackle, there he goes, running up the sideline. Nikhil Harry, are you kidding me? Ice is the game, Sun Devils win it 49-7. Herm Edwards officially 1-0 at Arizona State. Well, it couldn't have been much of a happier start to the Herm era for Arizona State fans, but there were several key moments in the game that deserve a closer look, and for that reason, we bring in our very own analyst, Mr. Julian Paras. Julian, it was a sweet welcome for Herm Edwards and company, but what stood out to you most? Well, I figured from this game, it was a great way to start the season mm -hmm. for the Sun Devils, no question. Um, the way that they had possession of the ball was, was great. They had the ball for about 28 minutes, and every single minute that they had, they were able to execute on the key possessions. I mean, Manny Wilkins, he did a great job of throwing the football as well, 237 yards, and four touchdowns, no interceptions, great efficiency from him. But I think it was a great all-around performance from the Sun Devils. I mean, tip of the hat to Herm Edwards. That must have been great being able to come out like that. And, you know, it was just a sight to see. Yeah, it really was. And you talk about Herm Edwards, and although the score was so great, 49-7, the victory, mm -hmm. Herm Edwards in his post-game press conference wasn't very pleased, and a large part of that being uh, penalties throughout the game. Is that something that you should be concerned about if you're an Arizona State fan? You know, personally, I think there is a little bit, you, you have to be a little skeptical because in past seasons, Sun Devils have, uh, have struggled to try to, you know, get those penalties a little pushed back because the penalties have been a huge issue for them in past seasons. I mean, as well as far as defense, you know, I mean, in that game, they had 11 penalties. They cost them 95 yards. So, you know, it's only a matter of time to see what they can do. But I think they're going to be able to execute on these mistakes and be better. Yeah, and obviously a, a big part of those uh, penalties was new faces in Tempe. And so with that, uh, who, who stood out to you most in the 11 starters that played their first game in, in Tempe? You know, I didn't see too many faces on the offensive end. 
But defensively, mm -hmm. you know, guys like DJ Davidson, Merlin Robinson, Ashari Crosswell, they all put in their share of work. So it was great to see what they could offer on that side of the field. And it was a great way of getting experience, too, because in the first game, you go up against UTSA, not a very good team. You get your experience and you get to feel what it's like in that kind of football environment at Arizona State. So I think it was great and it was a good opportunity for them to be able to grow as players. Yeah, for sure. Newcomers on the off or on the defense, but same veterans on the offense. And we can't go through uh, the Arizona State game without talking some Nikhil Harry. Six receptions, right. 140 yards, two touchdowns. What mm -hmm. type of impact does he bring to Arizona State? Like Nikhil Harry, he was the star of the show on Saturday and it was great to see him play. I was there on the field and it was amazing to see what this man could do. He showed great elusiveness. And, and, and he competed at such a high level. I mean, I was, I was amazed and astounded by what this guy could do. He caught the ball in tough situations. He executed, he broke down UTSA's defensive system. So, I mean, what more could you ask from one of the top, run, the top excuse me, wide receivers in the nation? And I think he made a statement of that, you know? So I think it's just a matter of time before we see what he can do all season. This is the kind of level that I believe that he's going to play uh, through, through the entire season. And I believe that Nikhil Harry is the real deal. Yeah, you talk about making a statement, Nikhil Harry. The, I'd say the Sun Devils made a statement, too. Of course, UTSA, not the toughest opponent, probably one of the lower tier teams they're going to play all year. Mm -hmm. But with Michigan State coming in uh, to Tempe this weekend, what do they have to do to win the game? You know, Michigan State is not a joke. I mean, they're definitely one of the tougher competitors that they're going to see through the course of this season. I mean, great defense, better offense. You know, I mean, great game at UTSA this past Saturday. but. Michigan State is is no joke. They've got uh, they've got new competition. It's a new game, bigger and better competition. So I think that they have to step up. I don't know if they're going to be able to bring that pressure because this is a Big Ten team in a tough conference that's really really good. I cannot state that more than I already have, but I think they're going to compete, and we're going to see that, and it's going to be great. And you talk about it's going to be great. It's definitely going to be a battle in Sun Devil Stadium Saturday night. Thank you, our very own Julian Patas, for the expert analysis on Arizona State. And upcoming, our very own Blaine McCormick is going to break down the Sun Devil defense and how they could possibly slow down that Michigan State offense. Well, by now, you've probably heard the cliche saying of defense wins championships. Well, it's true to every word, and it was evident Saturday night for the Sun Devils. I'm going to throw some quick numbers at you. ASU's defense put up 15 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, and also had a pick 6. Pretty good, right? Well, considering last season, the Sun Devils didn't even amount that number of sacks in a single game last season. One more number for you as well. The ASU defense held UTSA to a minuscule 2 rushing yards. Defensively, they're off to a hot start. Now the momentum just has to keep going, especially since they are facing off against Michigan State, who is ranked 15th in the country. Michigan State is known for their powerful run scheme, and quarterback Brian Lewerke, who is from Phoenix, ironically enough, has a sniper for an arm. That doesn't bode well for the Sun Devils secondary, considering they lit up 218 yards to UTSA. So tomorrow's game? Well, it'll be decided by how the defense comes out. Well, like I just mentioned, the defense was a major benefit for the Sun Devils, and that transitions very nicely into our next segment, Pros and Cons, where Scotty and I talk about the benefits and the disadvantages that the Sun Devils will have for this week. So recapping the game real quick, the penalties mm -hmm. were definitely out there. That's my first con of this segment. You can't win football games when you have all of those flags thrown up in the air. It might have been the first game jitters. I know you and I were talking about that with Herm Edwards' press conference. He mentioned that, but if you have a lot of those penalties and you have the yardage to back you up almost the length of an entire football field, that doesn't look good in the final stat sheet. Yeah, you talk about those penalties and Herm Edwards talked about it, first game jitters, but another thing he talked about in the post-game press conference was how great the defense was. Two yards rushing for the entire game for the Roadrunners and nine total sacks for Arizona State. Chase Lucas after the game was talking about just how on they were all night they were all clicking and it was very very exciting to see defensive wise the numbers were good you mentioned the 15 tackles for loss the nine sacks but the third down conversion rate of the offense was not a good look for them in the stat sheet they were three of ten on third down chances and you got to have your big playmakers to get in on those and they really performed well in the game don't get me wrong like Nikhil Harry Eno Benjamin both really solid games but those are the guys you want to point to on third down in order to get the first down and keep working down the football field. It just didn't look that well for the offense, but like 
like I said earlier, it's a long season. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the Nikhil Harry right out of the con section, put him in the pro section because <laughs> he was phenomenal. Six receptions, 140 yards, two touchdowns, including one of the biggest highlights we might have even seen all year, making about 15 players on UTSA miss all in the same play. It was amazing. So Nikhil Harry, one of the bigger pros for Arizona State. I said it last week. I'll say it again. First round draft pick. Read my lips. Biggest thing from that I noticed, though, special teams. They really struggled. Michael mm -hmm. Sleep Dalton, I'll give a shout out to him. He had an impressive game punting, had an over 60 yard punt. I think it was 62 if I remember correct. Very good on his end. But the rest of the staff, not the best. They drew a lot of penalties. And like I said, those penalties that I mentioned in my first con, a lot of those came on special teams. And you're not going to win a football game if you have that for your special teams unit. Uh, Brandon Reese didn't even attempt a field goal. Granted, it was kind of long for it but mm -hmm. you need to get that guy working because he will be a man that might win you a football game. Yeah, and one of the bigger reasons Brandon Ruiz did not attempt a field goal was because of the offensive line for Arizona State. Manny Wilkins after the game said that at least in his memory, it was the first time that uh, he had never been sacked at Sun Devil Stadium. Right. So no sacks for Manny Wilkins. That offensive line, it's a veteran crew. I think they're gonna be super solid for the entire 2018 season. And as we broke down the pros and cons of Arizona State, there was lots of action going through the Conference of Champions. That's why we're sending it over to our very own Austin Burnett. Thanks, Scotty. Week one in the Pac-12 got off to a rough start as Oregon State couldn't stop Ohio State's high-powered offense. Ohio State led by quarterback Dwayne Haskins threw five touchdowns as the Buckeyes steamrolled the Beavers 77-31. to Washington and Auburn faced off in a top 10 matchup Saturday night featuring two highly talented quarterbacks and Jake Browning and Jarrett Stidham. Auburn edged out Washington, minimizing the Huskies' chances of making it to the college football playoff. Mike Leach led his Washington State Cougars into War Memorial Stadium taking on the Wyoming Cowboys. And Washington State quarterback Gardner Minshew balled out completing 67% of his passes for 319 yards and three touchdowns, leading the Cougars to a 41-19 victory over the Cowboys. Cal was able to hold off North Carolina's late game rally in Berkeley. The Chip Kelly era got off to a sour start as the Bruins suffered a 26-17 loss to Cincinnati. Oregon cruised by Bowling Green 58-24 up in Eugene. Ducks quarterback Justin Herbert threw for 281 yards, five touchdowns and added 41 yards and a score on the ground against the Falcons. To enter Magnum led the BYU Cougars to a 28-23 dub against the Wildcats in Kevin Sumlin's head coaching debut for Arizona. That'll do it for this week from around the Pac-12. Scotty, back over to you. Let's take a step back. Sun Devil Stadium was at a lull as the eager Arizona State fans, ignited by the pregame hype, were beginning to lose their mojo. The Arizona State offense was in a critical third down situation on their own half of the field. What happened next? Manny Wilkins found Nikhil Harry on a screen pass, who then found the end zone for a 58-yard score, the first of the Herm era. The moment was electric, and so was the call from our very own Joran Palacio. Relive the moment that rocked Tempe with our Blaze Radio call the game. Got the defense to jump offside, didn't snap the ball though, so they're able to reset, and now takes a snap on third down, throws a little pass across for Harry. Harry spins out of tackle, he's got room to run. There goes Nikhil Harry to the 25-20, down the middle of the field. Look at that, a first round draft pick just took it all the way to the house. Touchdown Devils! Tomorrow night's matchup against number 15 Michigan State will feature the broadcast duo of Josh Schaefer and Matt Lively and can be heard live on blazeradioonline.com. Jordan, you make me smile, man, with all of your excitement. Hey, you know what else makes me smile? Success. And that's what former ASU quarterback Brady White is finding at Memphis. His debut for the Tigers? Well, it was a golden one passing for 358 yards and also five touchdowns in Memphis's 66 to 14 win over Mercer. Now you may be wondering, wait, Brady, he graduated last year from ASU. How can he be still playing in the NCAA? Well, the new NCAA graduate transfer rule allows just that. Student athletes who earn a bachelor's degree prior to the end of their athletic eligibility can then transfer to another school as a graduate student well, as long as they meet the right criteria. This means that White is cleared to play for Memphis this season and could be eligible for three more seasons total for the Tigers. Now, White graduated from Arizona State last December with a bachelor's degree in business and saw limited playtime at Sun Devil Stadium, but he was also struck with a leg injury that made him miss the rest of 2016 and also all of last season. 
First game jitters were well out of the way for White in his debut for Memphis. And lots of fans from both the Grand Canyon and Volunteer State will be eager to see his success. That's why Brady White is our feel-good story of the week. Taking you around the Pac-12 with our top plays of the week. Started off big with UCLA running back Kazmir Allen, 74-yard rushing touchdown into the end zone. It would actually be the Cincinnati Bearcats pulling up the upset, but give a good eye to Allen. Set a, pack, uh, set a record in high school for track and could give Usain Bolt a run for his money. Dustin right there, Blaine. We saw it earlier. We're going to see it again twice. Is nice. Nikhil Harry, big spin, step back, going across the field. Oh, my goodness. It's just so good. Nikhil Harry, come Coming up the sideline, good enough for our second top play in the Pac-12. Touchdown, Akil Harry, his second of the night. Sun Devils, 49-7. Let's stick with the theme of wide receivers. Quinton Pounds, out of oh. the air! Oh my goodness, the one-handed catch. He's been studying the Odell Beckham Jr. textbook. I think that's a class, actually, at Washington. But look at this Must catch, be. Scotty. One oh foot in, two my. foot in. Not only is that a catch in college football, but also the NFL. Auburn wins this football game, but Quinton Pounds wins big on our Pac-12 Top Plays of the Week. Look at the happiness. <laughs> All right, Quentin Pounds is making his name known. That resume is just going up and up. We had him on the show a couple times last mm -hmm. year, but I don't think anyone else is going to make that kind of catch. Yeah, seriously, week one, and Blaine, I think we might have already seen the Pac-12 play of the year. I definitely think you're right. Arizona State, they're going to have to put like five, six, <laughs> the whole team on Quentin when they have to go up to Seattle. Yeah, that's coming up in a few weeks. But tomorrow night, the Michigan State Spartans coming into Tempe here on the House of Sparky for one more time. He's Blaine, I'm Scotty for our producer Noah Lau and everybody here at the house. We thank you for joining us and we'll see you next Friday. Spartans coming into Tempe.